Hello and welcome to Geeked Play Studio Tutorials Modeling for VU. And uh, VU application have a very specific um, options, for example, environment drawing materials and other options. And I want to see how we can model for this application to take the best from what we have it. And as example, we will using hexagon to model our um, houses or other objects. Again, this is, will be just example. You can use any other applications to model Maya, Cinema 4D or other things. And as example, we actually will look on some models and possible problems when we start importing them inside the VU and what will happen. Mostly what I'm going to do is model inside the hexagon example. And next we'll go inside the VU. We import model inside the VU and we'll apply materials. We will use a different type of techniques to apply materials as well. We'll look on plus and minuses of all of those possible techniques. Okay, so let's begin first on the concept to see how um, texturing and everything work. So let's go example. I'm right here creating a simple cube. Okay, also I'm duplicating cube. And if you want to duplicate, you can actually create new one. You can select the cube, press Ctrl C, Ctrl V, or if you just go over arrow, hold down Ctrl key, click and drag, you will duplicate that object. That duplication will also can apply for the surfaces or the angles. So right here, for example, we have it three cubes. The one thing what I want you to notice right on a, where we have it names and object selectors, these is have the exactly same name. So they have it form zero. At this point, if we're going go ahead and export this um, model, what we created. So let's go ahead file, we go export and we'll go to export as a OBG file. So I'll go ahead and name this test one. So we'll save it and I will just have it all this normal export UVs if have it. Also we export normals. Um, we don't merge equal points UVs. We flip the textures in it and um, we remove duplicate points unchecked and merge groups if you have it. We don't have it any groups at that point. So let's go ahead and save it. Now we'll go inside the and let's go ahead and import the object we'll just create it. Okay, so we have it our test. Let's open. We'll just go to center object. The one thing you will notice because the naming was same, now we have it only one. So we have it no way to access our sites. So in this case, if we're going and I want example uh, put a different textures on a side it's kind of hard with Vu. you need to go inside the function editor and we need to go by object parametric orientation. So what I was meaning, we need to set up different type of mapping right here. Okay, we can go inside edit function and we can add additional fun functions to have it our color based on position of the object. And after we need to go and switch this to object parametric. Again, the tutorial not about how we can trick this way, but that is harder, hardest way to do this. And um, it's take a longer time to apply to our object. So instead, let's go ahead back to our hexagon. What we can do here, few things. If you want to separate the object one, you just need to rename them. So you select it. Go on the top and let's say one and be sure you press enter to validate this your selection. Let's go ahead and have a two. And we have a three. Again, this is by the default. So now we have it one and two and three, three different objects. We'll go ahead and export to this point. Okay, and we'll name it this test two. Okay, we'll save it. Now Let's go ahead and import new object we'll just create it. Okay, now you notice when we import it, we have an actual group of the objects where we name it one, 
2 and 3. Each of this object we imported, now we can manipulate separately just with this object. And this is actually helpful for the view example. If I want to apply independent material just to the one object first, I can go ahead and do this way. So let's go ahead and apply just as example. Okay, we also can have a second object and third object. So after you finish modifying those and applying textures at any time, so you can actually go back. And I do recommend when you're done to do this. And if, for example, if you don't want people to um, work with your object on the middle, for example, you think it's complete and you want kind of lock all them together, I recommend to bake them together. A um, couple problems with the baking. So let's first say if we want to bake, we can go right click and go back to polygons. And we'll do this in a second. Right now what I want to say, um, we applied material to this uh, cube and it's okay because this is just generic and it's world standard. So when we're changing in a world position, material can apply it and you don't see it different. So what if we want to, I want to apply, for example, some um, image textures to this. Let's do this way. And as example, I want to create, for example, all these different boxes. So I'll go to first. We'll go to have it map it pictures. Okay. And let me select image. Okay. And I'll go just select some box. So we'll select this image. And one thing I want to use it to properly map it, I want to use it object parametric. So in this case, it will properly map it to the size of my object. Click OK. Let me go ahead and copy this material. And I want to paste it to my two other objects. As well, I want to go inside and change my image. So I'll go and I'll select maybe something different box for this one. Okay, we'll go to this and we'll just change this one as well to um, some other. There you go. Okay, so right now we'll go to render on screen. You can see we have it boxes applied and we have it correct uh, material. So mapping actually very nice. The problem if we start to um, bake them, so let's go to bake to polygons. Okay, if we look right now, you can notice our material is stretching and doesn't apply properly. And reason is why, because we set right here to object parametric. If before we bake, our object was just the small cubes, now when we bake together, the object is become all these um, one big so in parametric stretching that way to fix this problem if you want it you need to go inside for example um, y okay and reduce this to about 0.3 so because we in this case it was easy we have one two three three sections so if we stretch this way we can readjust but you notice how also we still need switching or apply more additional work to be sure with object parametric that image apply correctly. So to this point, sometimes baking, it's not the best solution or um, you need kind of know how do you want to bake it so the materials doesn't stretch inappropriately. However, you notice when we even bake, we still have full information right here for our materials. So we have it one, two, and three, three materials we applied. And those materials save it with correct mapping to properly facings on our objects. The other solution actually to do this, so let's move this one away. If we're inside the hexagon, same like we'll work on other ones, um, and we know we will bake the materials, you'll notice we still have the facing inside. So when we're putting them, import this object in a view, and even we don't render, but we still have those extra polygons that hiding. 
and for example in this case we have it uh, for polygons hiding inside and they won't take it too much resources but when you have it a very big model you may have a problem with the additional polygons taking memory even you don't render them so let's just um, leave it alone for now those polygons and see how else I can do in the hexagon to modify and help me with my materials properly assign them so the one way we're going ahead and we expand our material tab okay next when I select one I'll go select the faces I select one front face in this case I'll create new material well, let me just change this material okay and next I'm also um, add new subgroup okay now I'm going to select other ones we'll select these faces I can go on a side and select all faces right now I'm just um, selecting okay I say this is will be just an example okay so right here I created separate um, materials and you can see for facing for those so we can go ahead and we can apply same to other ones let's go export at this point and we'll go to OBG and we call this test 3 okay now we'll go import inside the view okay right here you'll notice we have it same three objects because we name it they differently but for example the our top object have a two different materials assigned and based on a face so on this one what's happening now um, in our object is actually have it multiple materials which is a very nice without even UV map and how I say the creating UV map is of nice because it's help properly assigned but uh, we'll look in the future what is problem with also creating UV map in the view objects so it's given some limitation it can apply very nice without distortion we can apply to all objects but we cannot access to all functionality in, for the materials inside the view if you're using UV mapping so it's not totally view friendly models it's what we're actually creating so in this case let's do a couple things right here we have it our um, front face selecting so if we go just go right here we go to copy this material okay we'll go to paste it so you can see right here we have it our um, material applied to just the one okay and let's go just as example bake it Okay, and same we still have the same problem doesn't matter if we bake because how I said before the materials it does stretch accordingly to all object parametric size so we need to work on that one but in that case we have it actually six different materials right now layers assigned to front sides back so by using our assigning the materials to the side we actually can keep it same but let's do this way so for example we have one here let's do this we'll just name it all them one okay and we'll go ahead and export as a test for okay we go import our test for object and as example you can see we have a just a one object already baked together kind of what we try to do and right here we also have all the six materials we applied as before so if we're going to material 2 which is this front face at top okay and we'll go to um, base material and one what I have it before that will apply 
same again because it's one big object that will apply stretching so we need to readjust our mapping but in that case we have one object which um, have it only all these different facing and that is help us in case when we start creating optimized polygons and we go select one okay and we'll create for example this way we create three different okay on that case we don't have it those polygons that are collected inside so we still have it but we can now go ahead and assign different type of materials to different so we'll go ahead but just as example create different ones okay so we'll have different groups for this one with our different domains Okay, and as an example, let's just make a different actual on this one, middle one. I'm going to use a different material, so I'm going to use a texture image. Okay, and I'm just going 1024. Okay, I'll just select one of the image to use it for this. So we kind of have it example when we start importing and let's go ahead now um, export our model okay and file import and we'll go ahead and import arrow 5 so right here Actually, I did select some other ones, but let me remove this one. So here's a couple problems when we applied. You can see right here we have a distortion, so we actually need to work a little bit better on the UV mapping and properly set up inside the hexagon. But we possible for us to apply the proper textures inside the hexagon so we can still do this without even applying UV mapping. Also, um, okay, let me go switch to this one. Right here, we can also go inside and if you wanna to try to correct, and again, it's object standard, so let's go switch to object parametric in this case, and um, we'll go to Just to verify a couple things, we have it all is correct. And project textures. Okay, and again, this is with a normal probably setup, we have it a little bit wrong. So let me go ahead and maybe just reset to something else. So we have some problem with the scalability at that case. And it's mean we need to go inside the hexagon and work on our scales for this image because what's happened with Vu this is the image is currently 1024 by 1024 the other image was and uh, hexagon applied all that image just map it to the portion of this image and when we do inside the Vu, Vu will automatically an object parametric will scale down to the size of the object so and it's what happened it's right here anyway so here's just few examples uh, different type how we can um, work with different objects and some problems with materials but again this is just very very rough and overview we will go more in details when we start working so but I want you to kind of um, have its uh, brief understanding why sometimes maybe we need to separate objects when we start going modeling inside the hexagon so and we'll come back in the hexagon and we'll start modeling um, werewolf house for the view